Hi guys, today we have a very uh, interesting news for you. We're kickstarting a project that we're calling BPM 100 in 100 days. If you've been following the project, you'll know that BPM 100 is our next big engine. It's tentatively a 100 kN engine that will propel our speaker project. And so what we intend to do with this project, the BPM 100 in 100 days, is that throughout the next approximately 100 days, we want to go from, uh, I mean, through the entire process of designing the engine and building a testable prototype. So that's a fairly ambitious goal. And we're kickstarting it tonight with uh, essentially making a, uh, or starting up on making a system design of the speaker rocket. So because be before actually designing the rocket uh, engine, you'll need to know how much the entire uh, system will weigh. So we need to have a very uh, precise mass budget on the speaker rocket. And so that is the, the part that we're kicking off tonight. The, uh, the mass budget and really the pinpointing the, uh, the components of the speaker rocket. If you, uh, if you followed our Nexu uh, rocket project, then you will also notice that uh, the Nexu rockets became a little bit heavy. So we had a, uh, an initial weight budget on both the Nexu rockets and we ended up weighing about almost 30% uh, over the, uh, over the weight, weight budget. So it's very important to us that, uh, that we get it more accurate this time. Because with the speaker rocket, we actually have a, an apogee target. So as you know, we want to put a man in space. That means to, to launch a man to above 100 kilometers. So to actually get there, we need to have the, uh, the mass budget entirely correct to know exactly what uh, what engine we'll be developing, if we're developing a 100 kN engine, or if we can slag off slightly and only develop a 95 kN engine, possibly a 90 kN engine. So it's very important to know exactly where we'll end up with the mass budget. So if you're going to make an, a very strong engine with lots of potential for improvement, um, you need to go with one out of two different technologies. One of them is what we call a pipe design, which is something that can be seen from the British Stenter engine. That is where you basically take a number of, uh, of, of individual tubes and then you uh, bend and shape them so that when you have a cluster of maybe 40 or 60 of these tubes, you can make out a complete circumference of a combustion chamber and still get the, the good bell shape that you need. Um, one good thing about it is that all of these small individual tubes can handle a lot of pressure by themselves, even though they have very thin walls. The other option is this uh, parallel plate design that we've been using for the BPM-5 engine so far. So basically a, a combustion chamber inner liner and a combustion chamber outer liner with a small uh, gap in between uh, for, for cooling the engine. But those, those two liners, the inner, outer, uh, inner liner and outer liner, those need to be fused to each other in order to give the engine the required strength, not to, to buckle under, its, uh, under the fuel pressure or the heat. And we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a very big engine, the BPM 100 engine. And in order to make sure that we have enough future potential in it, we will have to solve this and join, fuse the inner and the outer liner one way or the, or one way or the other. And right now we're looking for a, a parallel plate design and, and maybe looking into some, um, some soldering methods and making, making some very big um, soldering operations in, in big uh, electrically heated ovens. That's one way of doing it. And this is what we are currently looking into. So there's a lot of steps to go through. So tonight we're kicking off on the, uh, on the systems of the speaker rocket and the mass budget. And then in the coming weeks, then we'll be looking into the uh, engine design itself and in particular the uh, injector design. We'll have to choose an inj injector type 
and we will also look into fabrication techniques of the uh, BPM 100. So currently, I think we're slated, uh, sliding towards having a regeneratively cooled engine. The uh, other engine that we're looking at is, of course, a, uh, an ablative engine that has some, uh, some sort of limitations. So, so uh, my personal preference is for a regeneratively cooled engine, just like the BPM-5. And we'll have to, uh, to look into how we can actually fabricate this. So a uh, 100 kN engine operating at tentatively 15 bar will have a uh, diameter of roughly, uh, chamber diameter of roughly 45 centimeters, 40 centimeters. And it will be, uh, with the nozzle, it will be almost a meter tall and weigh in uh, at around 100 kilo. So it's a, it's a significantly bigger engine than the BPM-5, and there's a lot of uh, very interesting challenges to, uh, to work on when we work on this engine. So it's going to be uh, a very interesting 100 days, and let's see if we can, uh, if we can actually get there in time. Um, I think it's, it's nice to have this, this goal, uh, this time frame set aside for the project, but if we, if we go over time and it, it doesn't materialize the, the prototype until February or March, uh, that would also be okay. Because there's a whole other aspect of it that is also to build a, a test stand. And that is not really uh, part of this BPM 100 in 100 days. The test stand will come later. Some people are also wondering if this uh, design process for a new rocket engine and a new uh, launch vehicle, if that's just a straightforward process. Um, a matter of fact is that it's an, a chicken and the egg problem. And in this case, um, the, the frame of the launch vehicle itself is actually the egg. So we need to come up with a, with a good and credible mass budget for the entire speaker rocket and the capsule on top in order to actually figure out what kind of performance do we need for the engine because we will be a little bit back to, to square one if we start out by designing an engine and then finding out that it's 10% too small. That's gonna cause a lot of headache and maybe some, some bad corrective decisions later down, down the way. So we have to do it the other way around. Launch vehicle first, mass budget for that one, credible one, and then we will end up with a number, okay, we need an engine this strong. If it's uh, 100 kilonewtons or 120 or maybe even 90 kilonewtons, that is the number we will need before we start designing the engine itself. And we only get that number once we have uh, made a lot of, of back and forth and some preliminary footwork with the mass budgets. So. Eventually, that's probably the most straight line to the target of putting a, putting a speaker rocket in space with just the amount of power we need. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit, all-volunteer project. We all work for free in our spare time. And the reason why we can make all this happen is because of the help from all you people around the world. So please click on the link and go to our website and sign up as a Copenhagen Suborbital supporter because it's all the small monthly donations from all you rocket fans from all over the world that makes this amazing project possible. Thank you.